I start with a reading from Emerson entitled The Oversoul. It says, But souls that of his own good life partake. He loves as his own self, dear as his eye. They are to him. He'll never them forsake. When they shall die, then God himself shall die. They live, they live in blessed eternity. Quote from Henry Moore. Then it says, space is ample, east and west, but two cannot go abreast, cannot travel in it to yonder masterful cuckoo. Prowls every egg out of the nest, quick or dead, except his own. A spell is laid on sod and stone. Night and days have been tampered with. Every quality and pit surcharged and sultry with a power that works its will on age and hour. And then he begins. There's a difference between one and another hour of life and their authority and subsequent effect. Our faith comes in moments. Our vice is habitual. Yet there is a depth in those brief moments which constrains us to ascribe more reality to them than to all other experiences. For this reason, the argument which is always forthcoming to silence those who conceive extraordinary hopes of man, namely, the appeal to experience, is forever invalid in vain. We give up the past to the objector, and yet we hope. He must explain this hope. We grant that human life is mean, but how did we find out that it was mean? What is the ground of this uneasiness of ours, of this old discontent? What is the universal sense of want and ignorance, but the fine innuendo by which the soul makes its enormous claim? Why do men feel that the natural history of man has never been written, but he is always leaving behind what you have said of him, and it becomes old, and books of metaphysics worthless. The philosophy of 6,000 years has not searched the chambers and magazines of the soul. In its search, in its experience, in its experiments, there has always remained, in the last analysis, a residuum it could not resolve. Man is a stream whose source is hidden. Our being is descending into us from we know not whence. The most exact calculator has no prescience that somewhat incalculable may not balk the very next moment. I am constrained every moment to acknowledge a higher origin for events than the will I call mine. As with events, so it is with thoughts. When I watch that flowing river, which out of regions and regions I see not, pours for a season its streams into me, I see that I am a pensioner, not a cause, but a surprised spectator of this ethereal water that I desire and look up and put myself in the attitude of reception. But from some alien energy, the visions come. Earlier, I had mentioned the essay called History, and the idea of one mind common to all people. This is a similar essay by Emerson. 
in which he is talking of the aspect that there is an oversoul. And he has in mind here that he is having thoughts. And the thoughts are like a stream of consciousness that we might call it today. He says, man is a stream whose source is hidden. And he is talking about the very life that we live. And he is saying that where that life comes from is hidden. We can't see it. And he says, really, where it's going, we don't know totally and completely what this is all about. Even when we start something, whatever it may be, our plans, the ideas, the goals, and everything that we have, we may have in mind that certain things are going to take place. But there is a greater power that can augment, change, remove, increase, make better, or just simply cancel those plans. And he says, our being is descending into us from we know not whence. We don't know where it comes from. Where the next breath descends from. We don't know. And there's a mystery when it comes to living that no matter what the past has been, we're always reaching for the future. No matter how good nor how bad it has been, we're reaching for better. And we have some vision that we may get in a moment. And no matter what hours there has been, no matter what days or weeks or months or years there has been in the past, it is that which we have in moments that becomes the item, the thing that sets the course of our lives. This is the hero's journey. This is what it means to become one's authentic self. It is that there is something that is descending into the individual. It is something that lets them know that there is someone that's bigger than the individual, the human, if you will. There's someone who is divine, there's a force, there's an energy, there's a power, there's something that is directing everything. That what we see as parts, he says, and we may see the sun, the moon, the stars. We may look at the earth and everything and we see individual parts. But there is that which sees the entire sun, moon, earth, the planets, the stars, everything as one whole magnificent system, one unit. And it is that wonderful being that he speaks of as the Oversoul. The Oversoul. And the journey of Self-awareness, this inner journey of self-awareness, again, there's a level of it that is a level of discovery of that which is the truth about oneself. But it is also a journey to discover that there is one self. 
as the text says in spirit, we live, move, and have our being. There's something that is going on here. There's something that is happening here. There's something. And we participate in it in some level and some degree. Today, as I finish looking at the presentation and did a reading from an individual named Ernest Holmes. I read this item and it could be that statement that's the biblical statement where it says, in God we live and move and have our being. And this Holmes had this item that it says, the one, capital O-N-E, manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. And he says that, Creation is a giving of form to the substance of mind. This is the from a reading from living the science of mind. And so when it says one mind common to all individual people, then the science of mind is talking about that one universal mind. And so... This mind is given form, and that form is called creation. And it said the whole action of spirit must be written within itself, upon itself. Creation is a play of life upon itself, the actions of a limitless imagination upon an infinite law. What God thinks, He energizes. The universe is God's thought made manifest. The ideas of God take innumerable forms. The manifest universe springs from the mind of God. The Bible says that the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. For he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The heavens declared the glory of God and the firmament showed his handiwork. And then he says the hermetic philosophy states that with reason, not with hands, did the world maker make the universal world. From the Hindu scriptures, From the unmanifest springs the manifest. Mind being impelled by desire to create performs the work of creation by giving form to itself. Everything that exists is a manifestation of the divine mind, but the mind being inexhaustible and limitless is never caught in any form. It is merely expressed by that form. The manifest universe, then, is the body of God. As our declaration, the principles, he says, reads, it is the logical and necessary outcome of an infinite self-knowingness of God. God's self-knowingness energizes that which is known, and that which God knows takes form. The form itself has the divine pattern within it. And so... Is talking about this aspect that God, God, God takes form. As God thinks, forms come forth. As God imagines, forms come forth. It's just this wonderful experience because what it's doing is giving us this idea that being made in God's image, we too are called forth to think and to imagine, to believe, 
that as the Spirit of God, the source of our living, like a river is descending into us, emerging from the midst of us, expressing itself as us, in us, through us, as us, that we then, we then become creators also of our own life, of our own affairs. And that yesterday does not hold primacy over our tomorrows. No matter what those yesterdays may have been, tomorrow is a time of promise. And not tomorrow in the sense of a 24-hour day, but tomorrow in the sense of the next moment of our lives that we can think of new thoughts. And that departure from what was yesterday, just a moment ago, to a new thought, a new moment, a new idea that emerges when we begin to believe that the very thing that has come into our minds, that is all possible, that we can be who we dream that we were, that we can do what we had a vision that we could do, that we could have that which we have desired to have. And it could happen in a moment. I was reading earlier this idea that when a person makes a decision that the universe conspires, which means that the entire universe, all of the creation, gathers together on the side of that individual in order to work together with that individual to bring to pass what they have decided to do. I like to think that that means when they've decided to do good, but... It could also mean that when they decided to do something that some would consider to be not good. But what I know is that when you've decided something, made a determined commitment to something, there are forces that move in your behalf in order to bring about what you have purposed to do. It is one of the reasons that as I was putting together all of the videos and all of the PDFs that go along with the course, The Inner Journey of Self-Awareness to Become Your Authentic Self, I saw those that had to do with self-awareness. I saw those that had to do with purpose, living a purpose-driven life. I saw those that had to do with meditation and journaling and living on purpose, all of these things. And I recognize that what is being called forth is that a person be committed to a journey. I don't mean momentarily committed to a journey. I mean to be committed to a journey. Something that you are committed to, to be, to do, to have, uh, really for the rest of your life. Because you know that at the very core of yourself, there is that which is you at a DNA level, that which you have structured, that which you have determined to be, do, and have. There is something that is within. There's a life that is descending, that is coming forth into you from a source that you cannot see. Is that life? That life that you are hungry for and desirous of, and you know it, and you understand that it's your purpose for being here. That life that you're taking the journey because you want that life. And it may look like things, it may look like if I had this or if I had that or if that person was my friend or whatever it may be, but it's so much more than that. 
is not a life that is lived necessarily after I physically die. It's a life that wants to come forth and be lived right here, right now. Right here, right now. That life. And so, I want to just tap into this, this oversoul, this idea. Remember, there was history. There's one mind common to all individuals. Then there's this journey of discovery that we're on, we're taking, and we invite you to send that email so that your journey can be intentional. Intentional. You have nothing to fear, really. Nothing to fear, really. Because you, we're all already on a journey. The life is already descending into us. The stream is already flowing to us and flowing through us and as us. It's already there. And what is called for is to be a part of it in an intentional way. In an intentional way. To use the tools, the techniques of meditation and smart questioning and self-affirmation and all of these various tools that are available, uh, even community being in a group of people who are going to lift you up as opposed to move you down, who are going to aid and mentor and coach all of these things in regard to life because the world can be changed. It's not set. Remember this statement that said that all of those yesterdays were casting them behind us and moving forward to our tomorrows. That's both an individual item, but it's also a collective item. Humanity is determined to evolve. Humanity is evolving. We see it in regard to the technology, but more importantly, it's happening in regard to people all around this world. All around this world, people are evolving. I've seen it, of course, in the minds and hearts of children and individuals have said that the children, and they look to the upcoming generations, the children who are in, uh, in college and the children who are in high schools and the children who are in the middle schools and elementary schools, and they look, but I declare that children are not the only ones who are growing and changing the day that we're living in the technology it is making it possible for individuals who had almost checked out and said that i cannot learn anymore but they are now learning more than ever before people who are past 50 and 60 years old were learning new languages and learning new skills and gaining new talents and abilities all kinds of things are changing Living longer, doing better, fighting through, finding ways to get past pains and hurts, emotional swings, all of this stuff that has been sidelining people for so long. Such it is today. People staying in the game. And so length of life is one thing. To live a quality of life, you want to understand what this life is about. You want to understand what this journey is about. If you're living length of life, that's why Emerson said that it's not just the length of life. It's those moments when you begin to just for a moment get a glimpse of, a thought comes and you catch it. You may dismiss it, but there are people who are catching, catching those dreams that they've had. You look around and you see that 
they're living this life. Well, the one history said there's no person that has ever thought a thought that you can't think, ever had a feeling that you can't feel, ever accomplished a deed that you can't accomplish. Don't let anything tell you that you can't do it if you are committed to doing it. Don't let anybody tell you that. If you're committed to doing it, if you're committed, don't let even your circumstances in life or the amount of resources that you have or anything, remember that when you make a decision that you're going to bring about a certain end result, the universe conspires to work in your behalf. I know it's difficult to understand. I'm, I'm actually one of those individuals who is grasping this for myself, even in this day and time. I'm saying to the universe, I'm saying to God, conspire in my behalf and make it work for me. Because I'm reading this word, I'm believing this word, I'm trusting this word, that the universe conspires and I want it to conspire and bless you and the you and you and you so that we have a better world. We have a better world. I've seen things. I've seen things before they ever happen. Before they ever happen. I've been quiet about a lot of things. But I want to invite individuals again to have this very positive and powerful experience in life. And what I know is that your life can be and will be what you decide that it will be. You will have the quality of life that you determine you will have. And I don't say to any individual that it's the easiest thing to do initially, but I do say that it is possible. That if you put it all on the line, then life has no choice but to give you life. It has no choice but to give you life. It already says that we reap what we sow. It's never less than what we sow. It can be so, so much more. So what you give, you're going to get back. That's just true. That's just absolutely truth. And it's not talking about just giving to a human being or anything like that. This is a journey that you take within oneself, but it's a journey that you're really taking in your relationship with spirit, with God, with your little self, and you're journeying to your larger self. It's a very powerful journey, very powerful. And as you read, as you study, as you trust, as you believe, there are changes that are absolutely going to take place in your life. You could just take really the conversations that we're having and share these conversations with other individuals. Just take this conversation that we're having via this, this means. Let me tell you, we did a seminar called Transforming Trauma Through Transcendency. And in that seminar, which was dealing with physical sexual abuse or recovery from physical sexual abuse that resulted from uh, being um, in a childhood situation over which a person did not have really control over. And in that particular uh, uh, seminar, there were all kinds of wonderful things that happened. And we can send you the tapes uh, uh, the MP3s in regard, you can download it. We'll send it to you. Info at IWillRestore.com. We can send that to you. But there were uh, individuals in that group, in that study that we did, in that seminar. And what they did is that we had the teaching that was do being done 
But those individuals also, as they learned and understood what we were doing, what we were saying about our safe place and community, they took the book that we had, took it to their friends, and then started groups beyond what we were doing, where we were. They Now listen to me. They took that and they took it to friends and sat down together with two, three, or ten individuals and they had their own individual discussion group. That's the power of what we're talking about. Transformation. Transformation taking place. Because the past does not have to be the prison when it comes to your future. No matter what it has been. And whether you're locked into some uh, physical disease or physical illness or some job that you don't like or whatever it may be. Or a feeling that you don't have the skills and abilities of a position that you deserve. It does not matter. Remember, it's the idea of imagining, imagining, and as a result of that, it takes form, it takes shape, making that commitment to your future. This is the inner journey. I, I, I just want to encourage you. To believe your dreams, that it can happen for you. That people that you consider to be special, they are special in the same way that you are special. They decided that they were special. They decided that it was for them. They expected that it was going to work out right. And it did. I encourage you to expect the same thing going forward. Blessings to you. Take care. May Spirit always, always, always continue to descend to you, flow into you for now and for always.